and welcome to the Gotham Outsiders, our Batman book club. I'm your host, Batman obsessive Chris. It's my co-host, TJ. Hi, everyone. I am your Chris proclaimed Batman acolyte, and I'm so excited to be here. But we can't do it alone, so we sent up a signal. No, not a bat signal. The brilliant YA author signal, and the incredible Justina Ireland answered the call. Hello, Justina. Hello. Justina, we saw on Twitter that you love the Harley Quinn TV show. Can you tell us your relation to that and Batman in general? Oh, I am a long time Batman fan, Stan, whatever the word we are using this week for that. Um, going all the way back to the original television show with Adam West. I used to, when I was a kid, come home from school and it was on from like four to five because, you know, the TV show always has that break in the middle, like, what will happen next time on Batman? (laughs) Um, So that was my first introduction to Batman. And then when (laughs) Batman, the OG Batman with Michael Keaton came out in like, I don't, yeah, (laughs) a very long time ago, um, I saw it at the drive-in theater and I remember I remember sitting in the car with my mom and my mom was complaining. She's like, it's so dark. It's so dark. And I was like, because it was Batman. So yeah, so I've been a huge Batman fan. Um, I used to watch, faithfully watch like Batman the Animated Series in the 90s, which is to me is still my favorite. Um, yes. Batman Beyond. I love Batman so much that I have even watched Teen Titans Go. So- <laughs> oh, that's commitment. That's a dedication. <laughs> oh, that's a little dedication. I love Batman. Um, I've fallen in and out of the comics because it's hard to keep track. Um, I usually get trades. Um, and then like when they kept rebooting the, the, the 52 and like they did it like in, what is it, 2008? And then they did it again like yes. in 2012. Yeah, 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 I, I kind of like fell off. Um, so I was really excited when uh, the DC television stuff started up when you started to see that pop in because it was another way to engage with the media. But yeah. I'm a huge Batman fan. I love it. Yeah, it's it sounds my favorite like favorite dysfunctional rich dude. So <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, there's not much competition I know. in terms of good, the good ones. Right, right. It's like oh, like a Green Arrow, I guess, man. But like, <laughs> you don't have Batman's issues. So yeah, was super into all the adaptations of Batman, but I never read much of the comic books, which is kind of why. I'm here on this podcast with Chris. She's educating me on all the yeah. comics lore. I like I liked the comics, but I always felt like so. Uh, you know, obviously the comics I tried to fall into were like the ultra grim dark Batman in the late early nineties, say right? like the um, the you know actual Dark Knight stuff. Um, and I always just found it so bleak and sad. Um, yeah, I would just go read like X Men because they were so <laughs> more hopeful. I was oh, like, I love X Men. And Chris is all about the the bright, fun Batman. It's right. true. I yeah, I don't like the bleak and sad either. Oh, good. Yes, and we're here to make everything as gay as possible. So don't yes. hold back. Oh my god, uh, he's also my favorite, like low key homoerotic series. You know, <laughs> low key unless like, he's high key. Like, low key, low key. Air quotes. You can't see my air quotes around low key. <laughs> um, because yeah, because I think that it's just yeah. I, man it's just there's so much to analyze there <laughs> it's just it's extremely queer in so many ways yeah like there is like I know it's just like he just had a great relationship with him and Jim Gordon but it's like really like <laughs> <laughs> okay Mr. they're a little codependent <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right Chris did you have some trivia for us by chance I do have some trivia for us tonight Guess. my uh, first I know, such a surprise. This never happens, except every week. Uh, (laughs) My first question for the two of you, and either one of you can answer, um, what is the, well, I should say, the show uh, posits a few possible ship names for Joker and Harley, but they never say the actual one that's used in fandom. Do either of you know or have a guess of the actual ship name for the cursed Joker Harley ship is? Oh my gosh, I don't even know if I've ever heard it. Justina, how are you feeling? I hate that ship, so I... It's awful. Yeah, we it's, hate it so much. It's my least favorite. I hate it so much. Um, I don't know the ship name because 
it's one of those things I try to to okay so this is my secret fandom shame I try not to like participate in any of the shipping stuff because I'm always the one that's the most popular is usually the one I hate the most so (laughs) if I just take myself away from the room I don't that's me too like it doesn't that's fair I'm gonna I'm gonna throw out a good guess okay is it Jarly? It is is Jarly. Jarly. That is awful. Isn't it? The ship name is even bad. That should be a sign that the ship's not going good places. (laughs) We've upgraded. Uh, Oh, wow. I can't believe I I actually got a point. I know. This is a first. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) He tries. Uh, to be fair, this is this game is usually rigged against him intentionally, but tonight it isn't. <laughs> ah, she admits it. What? I admit nothing. Allegedly. Uh, it's allegedly rigged against you and in favor of our guests every time. It's only fair. <laughs> you should sue for a recount. <laughs> <laughs> oh! There's going to be a lot of that going on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Who's living in Gotham now? Us or them? <laughs> All right, our second question. This is just a uh, yes or no, and you both can answer. Do you think that Kite Man is a real comic character? I think he is. I'm going to say yes, too. You're both right. Yes, yes, he is. Yeah. He is a comic character, and he's not as obscure as I thought when I started Googling him. Apparently, he's been in just a ton of random comics, has a very dark backstory, and is named chuck brown after charlie brown (laughs) okay also the thing that he says in the show all the time hell yeah is apparently his catchphrase he says it on the show he's like that's my catchphrase babe oh i I thought it was a joke (laughs) (laughs) i have learned that all the things you think are jokes in things in comic books are usually true somewhere somehow that's really true i mean that's basically the whole premise of lego batman right (laughs) i just watched lego batman it's so good i I know it's my favorite i'm so excited that you've seen it now tj it was great i just watched it uh last night as of recording and it made my night it was so much fun and having read more batman stuff since uh we started this podcast I, i definitely appreciated it more is it not the most accurate batman movie (laughs) <laughs> I have so much to say about it, but I know we're going to talk about it at some point. <laughs> That's fair. So I'm That's, fair. That's fair. Uh, Kite Man is also in Lego Batman, by the way, though only briefly. He's he right, one of so the you're... Lego people you could collect, I think. Oh, really? Oh, I want to get Kite Man. <laughs> yeah, because they had like the pencil guy. I actually have quite a few. I collect Lego fig- minifigs, and they had Aww. a special like package of like just the Batman ones. And I have, I don't think I have him, but I think I'm pretty sure he was one of them. I love it. That's I really love cool. It. Is he? Does he come I, with Condiment Man? <laughs> condiment Man is, uh, well, he's, I think it's not Condiment Man, but there's a hot dog one. Uh, there's one that's just like a hot dog. I love it. I don't condiment remember man, that. Man, I, guess. I don't know. Maybe Condiment <gasps> Man was dressed like a hot dog. I'm trying to remember. Maybe he was. I'm trying to think. That's his sidekick, <laughs> obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the hot dog. <laughs> As someone who's obsessed with Batman, I've been given multiple Lego Batman, like the Batman character. So I now have Mm -hmm. a bunch. (laughs) But yes, uh, our final question is about the show, but has to do with stuff outside the show. The character of Frank the Plant is based on a famous movie. Anyone know what it would be? It should be Little Shop of Horrors. It sure is. It's Little Shop of Horrors. I I could picture it in my mind, like that specific character, but I couldn't think of the name. Wait, have you not seen that in like recent memory? Because I think it's on like one of the streaming services. I've never seen it. My exposure to it is limited to Twitter gifts. Oh, okay. Now you have homework. Yes, it's real good. (laughs) Yeah. When I come on, I'll come on your podcast about Little Shop of Horrors and we'll talk about (laughs) it. He has specifically podcast. <laughs> oh, that's so good. He has specifically named Frank because it was a Frank Oz movie. So there's your little trivia Aww. of the night. Yeah. That, that, did Frank Oz do Yoda? Was that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And Mitch. And I love Frank the Plant. Just want to say. Yeah. 
Well, those are my questions, so we should jump into the meat of the Harley show. Well, who won? It was a tie, right? Oh, yeah. Was I keeping track of points? Yes. Uh, (laughs) I think (laughs) (laughs) it was actually a tie. Oh, so I haven't Everyone's a winner or a loser. Yeah, we're all winners. So far, the only thing TJ has done is tie or lose, but one day, TJ, I believe you will beat the guest. (laughs) One day. All right. So my first thing that I have on here to talk about is how do you guys feel like this iteration of Harley Quinn uh, compares to all the others that we've seen? I mean, I'm going to be honest and say this is probably the only one of the only iterations of Harley Quinn's I've liked um, for so many reasons. And it has less to do with Harley and more to do with her relationship with Joker. I yes. think when you see her in like those early comics, she's obviously there just like eye candy right I mean you have that very cheesecake body and stuff like that like from that, yeah. like that 90s holder of stuff um and like you like even within that first okay first of all let me just go ahead and give you my disclaimer that Suicide Squad movie is unwatchable so yes. <laughs> <laughs> unwatchable I just rewatched it for the first time since I saw it in theaters and it's still garbage <laughs> it has not become less garbage I literally tried to watch that movie three times. One of them was on a plane and I've never made it through. <laughs> so, if you can't finish a movie on a flight, it must be right. really bad. It's just, there's nothing to do. No, the second one's good, right? The, the uh, second Harley Quinn movie, the, um, oh, Birds, of Prey. the Birds of Prey one, right? But I, I'm a huge Birds of Prey. I'm a huge Huntress fan. Um, and when she was part of World's Finest, I'm a huge World's Finest fan. Um, but like, and those are like a deep cuts for those who don't know. It's like an alternate or well, depending on which iteration of it, sometimes it's alternate or Supergirl and, and the Huntress. And she's, you know, depending on which iteration, depends if she's Batman's daughter or she's like the, the character she is in the movie. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so like, uh, so like, I, I like, I, I deeply like those things. But that was the, like, that movie, like, that was a better Harley Quinn, I think, than like the original Suicide Squad, Suicide Squad movie. But they still never really address the fact that, like, her relationship with Joker is highly toxic yeah. and highly abusive. And, like, I don't expect if you have a relationship with a super villain, it's not going to be abusive. <laughs> but, like, we can at least talk about that. Like, we can at least yeah. make it clear, like, this is not something anybody should aspire for. Um, so I was really happy that that was one of the things they addressed very clearly in the first season of Harley Quinn. Yeah, I, I love the Birds of Prey movie as well, but I gotta say, so I'm I'm watching through the show for the first time. It owes a lot. I mean, the movie Birds of Prey owes a lot to this show. Uh, there's a lot of themes that are straight out of this, and this came first. So yeah, yeah, they yeah. were they were. I think they were close together, but this definitely came first. So I, I'm curious if like there was any sort of conversations between the two production teams of like, hey, what are you doing? Like, oh, we're, we're doing something similar. Well, there's even, I mean, the, the beginning scene of Birds of Prey with her going to Joker's lair and everything, I was like, wait a second. When I was watching this show, I was like, wait, I've seen this scene before. So. Yeah, that's true. Um, and how do you guys feel about like, so obviously when Harley Quinn was first introduced, she had a very different costume. Nowadays, She's got the blonde hair out. She's wearing more revealing clothing. How do you, do you like that? Like, do you like her current look or do you think it needs to be updated? Like, which one did you prefer? You know, I don't think, I don't think it matters because even when she had her old costume, it was basically just a silhouette. It was just like basically boobs, right? right? I mean, it was like, she might've been completely, she might as well have been naked, just a naked body with body paint. Um... And so, like, I don't think it that necessarily matters. But I'm also not the person. I don't. I don't mind ultra revealing costumes on um, characters, male or or female, or or um, anywhere in between. Um, but I think it should be part of their character. And I think yeah. for her, it makes Great sense point. that she'd wear like a half shirt and short shorts because she because right. <laughs> you know part of it is like she doesn't like she's impulsive and like yeah. those sorts of things. So I, you mentioned actually, I um you mentioned X Men. I'm a huge Emma Frost fan, so oh, I get where yeah. you're coming from. <laughs> yeah, Emma Frost. You know she's gonna she's gonna have to wax like weekly because there's no way you can <laughs> wear that that uniform without like a waxing studio on call. Like that is real. <laughs> yeah, she's keeping them employed during the pandemic. Right. <laughs> she's got so much wardrobe tape you don't even understand. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and so, yeah, so and I think that's part of it. It's like, I do like some of the updated costumes we've seen. Like, so one of the things, one of the co- things I did like about Supergirl is the updated, and not the TV show, but the comic book, when they updated the costumes, they did update mm-hmm. her costume. And I've, I've always appreciated, like, when they do, like, something, a costume that's a little more, um, makes sense for a hero but Harley Quinn's not a hero right like she's still a, at the end of the day like she's I mean she's chaotic neutral at best yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I mean she might have like edge into chaotic good sometimes but at the end of the day she's still like kind of out for herself um and I like that's okay and I, I don't expect her to you know necessarily dress like a nun I mean <laughs> us yeah. chaotic neutrals born. gotta stick together yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I I, re- I really agree. I think for her, it the difference is whether she seems to be owning it or not. And there's definitely versions in the comic where she's clearly like a se- sex object, or or at least you know, implied to be one. I'm thinking the fact that she started on the animated shows. I guess that wasn't exactly what she was there. I don't know. That's complicated. But um, <laughs> I was like, we don't we don't have time to unpack all of that. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's like Google the Starfire arc, and I think we're all we're all caught up, right? It's the same oh, thing for gosh. Starfire, right? It's like she's oh, like the sweet girl in the in the TV cartoon, and then all of a sudden you, you go to the comic, you're like, what is going on, Starfire? Like, you, right, like why are you always right. naked? <laughs> yeah. Oof, naked and has amnesia, so she sleeps with the you know siblings and doesn't remember yeah. that they were siblings. Uh, it's yeah. oh, TJ, you have some fun stuff. Ahead. Oh no. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that's a that's a deep dark sad hole. The star hole. Sorry, that pun in. was not meant to be. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. PJ Starfire. Uh, let's just say Barbara Gordon isn't the first woman to sleep with both Dick and Jason. Oh. Yeah. Okay. okay. I went there. I went there. Oh, uh, moving on. <laughs> Uh, how do you guys feel about the the voice acting? Like, did you have a favorite uh, iteration of a character in this show and just in general? I actually love the voice acting. And in fact, when Wanda's like showed up as the queen of fables, I yes. was like yes. screaming. And my daughter was like, because I actually watched this with my daughter. And I like, she, she's 12. And so like, disclaimer, I, I fully understand like those like some mature like stuff. But we like in our house, we watch things and we just talk through it. Um, and I yeah. figured like they were, this was not going to be like hentai or porn. So I was right. like, we're safe. <laughs> we're safe. <laughs> like that. There's not a until line. season four. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> when it gets there, we should, all of a sudden she won't be able to watch it. Um, but, like, <laughs> they, I do have to point out, they do talk about hentai in this show. At <laughs> they one did. Time. Yeah. They with did. The, the fanboy one. Wait, have, yeah. Chris, have you not gotten that far? Have you just not watched season I two? haven't got that far, but it's okay to go ahead and do spoilers. They, this okay. is kind of non-spoily show really really funny framing device in an episode in season two um and they talk about hentai and my daughter turned to me she's like what's hentai i was like it's animated (laughs) porn it's it's anime porn she's like oh i was like yeah so when you're looking for anime stuff don't google that like like, (laughs) we're both gonna have to have a conversation yeah chris it's two guys on the couch talking about how much the harley quinn show sucks and one of them's wearing a release the snyder cut shirt and the other (laughs) one has one that says the last Jedi is not canon, and they're just like, oh. <laughs> yeah. like oh, let's just torrent some hentai instead. Yeah, let's just torrent some hentai. Yeah, it's so funny. That's it's so funny because they you know everything about the show and everything else. I love it. And then they it. use that the same sh- background again later on when Frank's like trying to get people to vote for the, the show <laughs> to be get an award. So it's funny. It's like the same. It's like the it. basement background with like paneling. It's just so funny. And speaking of um, Frank, he's another voice actor that I, he's so funny. Yes. Him so and, and uh, King Shark are probably, yes. have some of the best, like King Shark has some of the best lines, hands down. Like the episode uh, where he's in prison. Yes. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> what? I'm talking about you, that word. <laughs> <laughs> Was so good. Oh, I love that oh word. I love him. I loved him so much. It's he's so funny. funny. I, I'm obsessed with Clayface. I gotta say, <laughs> oh, the yeah. he's great, and he's Alan Tudyk, who also voices the Joker and so many other characters in this show. Yes, yes, yes. And he's the real I, MVP here. Yeah, yeah. I actually do this like who voices that. And I was like, oh, wash, wash, <laughs> pirate Steve. All Everybody is Wash in the show. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Speaking of Clayface. 
Yes. My reading of Clayface in this show is like, he's some sort of queer, but it's not exactly specified. Like we get some, yeah. some gender fluidity going on specifically in a season two episode where they're like uh, using different pronouns back and forth. But then uh, of course, Clayface is like super into theater and then he shows attraction or like acknowledging that people are attraction no matter their gender. Uh, did you guys have a take on that at all? Ooh, I love it. I love I love yeah. this Clayface Renaissance of like let's actually give this character a character that's happening both in the show and in the comics. So TJ and I just read Rise of the Batman, which also does a lot of like Clayface. Clayface is a soft, cuddly character that you just want to hug and love. Um, I would love for part of this Renaissance of Clayface to be a queer awakening. That would be amazing. Yes. Yeah, I did wonder that because like the there's a the episode when they go to the college. And Clayface is in like a feminine body, and then they're like, she shit all she talks about is Chad or whatever, and they're just like, oh my goodness, um, yeah, I, I, that's one of the things I think is kind of cool is like the idea that maybe if you have a body like Clayface does, like gender isn't fixed, and that's the idea that like we don't have to be like obsessed with this gender binary or just being this or that all the time. So I do, I do like that. I do like the conversations that have kind of, and I, and I also like that it's, it's so low key. So the people who'll be pissed about that stuff don't even, aren't going to pick it up. <laughs> like, yeah. So it's, yeah. Like, so it's like, it's nice. Cause then you don't have to have like those two people like boycott Harley Quinn. Cause you know, like, like they're already mad about like the feminism. So it's yeah. like, okay. Like, like, okay. I was going to say, those people are definitely already mad at the show. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Snyder Cut is getting released, so we might see yeah. them pay more attention to Harley Quinn now. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh, is Harley Quinn in the Snyder Cut? I don't want to know. Never mind. I yeah. don't <laughs> know. Supposedly the Joker is going to be in the Snyder Cut. So what is, the, what is this trash fire? Anyway, we don't have time for, we definitely don't have time to unpack that. <laughs> um, yeah. But I know, I think that is a really interesting point you make, Justina. So um, my, the listeners of the show know, but you might not, that I research gender and sexuality. That's sort of my thing. Um, and we talk a lot about gender as a performance, as a something we put on. And it, mm-hmm. that's interesting to think about with Clayface, who's a literal shape sifter and a performer also performing gender I think that was really interesting I like that you say that because I tell my friend who is also by the way like a, a women's studies gender studies uh, major I always tell her I'm not performing gender anymore <laughs> <laughs> I think we should just take days off you know yes just... I'm like I'm not doing it. I'm too tired <laughs> it's a lot of work leave me alone a mental health yeah. day <laughs> yes <laughs> mental gender day right. yes uh, so... it's like that that uh, that Onion article that was like a uh, woman takes a break from being a feminist woman for a day so she can enjoy her damn self. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Keeping yeah. with the queerness here. Uh, so I know Chris hasn't done the show, but Justina, how did you feel about Ivy and Harley's relationship and where it ends up? So I knew it was going to end up over there a little bit because, <clears throat> well, first of all, because um my kid Googles everything we watch and gets spoiled. <laughs> uh, damn Google. Yeah, and she, that's one of the reasons she's really excited to watch the show though, is because she was like, they end up together and I wanna watch this. And I was like, cool. Yes. Um, which is one of the reasons, yeah, which is one of the reasons I was like, let me Google and see how bad this is. Um, so we don't like watch it. And I knew it was like, it's like, it's fine. Um, but I also knew it a little bit from the comics that they yes. were gonna like sort of end up together because I mean I didn't I didn't like truly love like the Harley Quinn comic um but I think they I think they were trying as much as you can try within like the um walls of what people were what DC was allowing them to do that yeah. Makes sense. yeah absolutely um and so I was excited to see like if they were going to actually push that further and so I actually loved that um because as yeah I I think it's I think that's probably I have a lot of friends who like are married to a person that they were just really good friends with. I'm married to my husband and, and like, it's because we were really, really good friends um, before anything else. And so I seeing the evolution of that relationship was just, it was really delightful. And it was, I was really scared that they weren't going to go there by the end of season two. And then that they did really made me happy. So I was, I was excited. We actually, I think my kiddo and I were like, screaming out and jumping up and down when they have the they have the kiss at the top oh. of 
Bane she, prison. Also, Bane is also delightful. Uh, <laughs> yes, Bane. Yeah. Or Bane. Bane. So my boyfriend and I are watching through the Dark Knight trilogy. Uh, this is his first time watching it. And we're just about oh. to watch The Dark Knight Rises. And I'm like, and he has watched Harley Quinn with me. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, he's right. going to so, have a very different well, idea of Bane. <laughs> I'm like, he's never going to take he's, Bane seriously, ever. He's never, he's not going to be prepared for Bane to like murder a, like 100 people. <laughs> right? And like, I love that the voice, like all, all these, like in the Lego Batman movie and in the Harley Quinn show, they use the same voice. Uh, for Bane that was used in the Dark Knight Rises so like yeah. I guess that's just Bane's voice nowadays it's just it's Bane's so voice ridiculous it's so ridiculous it's like the most ridiculous voice ever I, know. But I, will say, I think it's better than like the like the quasi like Latin like wrestler that used to use voice right Which right is kind of, like a little racist oh um, my god yeah. like, I'm like I think it's like an improvement but I do like when I watch her watch her the Quinn and Bane for, for the first time I started laughing because when we saw literally we went and saw Dark Knight in the theater um which was like a traumatizing experience because like there were a lot of little kids there um <laughs> we're watching this movie in the theater and my husband and I and this is when my daughter was very young and we were like, these this movie is so violent. It's like these little kids are in here. Um, and you know, at one point Batman's back is broken. And literally every single time though, like Bane would speak, it like the attention was gone because we just started giggling at his voice. <laughs> so I was like, Oh, they're making these old people march across the eyes. What's going on? <laughs> one of my favorite Bane related jokes in the show and the ongoing jokes in the show is that everybody's coffee mugs say something about their character and yeah. Bane's coffee mug says caffeine is my reckoning yeah <laughs> it's my favorite I, mean, I guess he could he could be the Bane from the Batman and Robin movie where I'm pretty sure he doesn't even talk um he's he grunts or whatever yeah Urgh. right yeah but uh yeah. My experience with the Harley Ivy relationship in the show is very different from yours, Justina. I, I watched it week to week when it was airing, and I so I had no idea where it was going. Uh, and in season one, I firmly was convinced, oh, they're just going to be friends. They're just going to be good friends. There was like that really small hint where they fell on top of each other and in my mind I was like, oh, that's the the breadcrumb I'm going to get. Like they gave us a hint at least. Um, so I was pleasantly surprised. I had no idea. I know we're so used to being queer baited, but we are living now in 2020 where Des Destiel is canon. So <laughs> they killed him. He literally. <laughs> I know it's the worst thing. I, for the record, I have not watched Supernatural in 10 years, but I have my entire Twitter feed has been Supernatural for an entire week now. <laughs> you made good choices because, like, I have kept watching and I'm basically just pulling myself through the season and I'm like every episode I, I die a little more inside oh no and you, I you haven't and gotten Cassiel. to that yeah I mean Cassio and I haven't gotten to that episode yet but I saw it on Twitter and I was like god damn it I'm gonna I'm gonna watch the rest of this all at once because it's gonna be like ripping off the band-aid because I can't keep going through the pain week after week. Uh, only yeah. supernatural can make an actual character coming out as gay homophobic <laughs> that's actually right on brand for them to be honest it really is right on brand for them oh i mean i mean because like they like charlie as soon as they revealed charlie was queer it was like oh well she's gonna die <laughs> better put her in a box uh, <laughs> like if i watching this show my first time around i was like if there was any inter iteration of the character that was going to be queer it was going to be this one but i still just didn't yeah. expect it um I, yeah, we love it when it happens. Yeah. Yeah, me too. So there's something that I'm not exactly prepared to talk about and to the full extent, but something that okay. I think is worth bringing up uh, because mm -hmm. I see it often on DC and Twitter about this show is all of the anti-Semitic stuff. Yeah. Uh, did Does either that keep... of you? Uh, yes, I, it did okay. stand out to me. Does that keep going? Is it, it was certainly in the first couple of episodes. Um, um, so I think it pops up here and there, but I do want to acknowledge that the show was created and written by Jewish people. So it okay. was not an intentional thing at all. Um, and Harley Quinn, the character, is Jewish, which yeah. I did not know going into this. Uh, even rewatching it, I 
I'm reading more about it. I was like, oh, she is Jewish. There's a whole episode where you meet her parents and they're mm. Jewish. Uh, and then there is a part where she holds up a menorah uh, at, one po- yeah. at one point, um, Harley herself. So uh, I, again, I don't know if either of you feel appropriate to talk about it, but I just thought it was something worth bringing up. Yeah, I see, I didn't notice that I'm not, I'm not Jewish. Um, but one of the things I did, I mean, because there is an re- episode earlier, so I guess I should probably back up. I'm really bad at just, just seeing anti-Semitism. And I think part of it is because um, I grew up on the West Coast. Mm-hmm. So like everybody there hates Latinos. <laughs> like, so like, like immigrants, like, you know, undocumented immigrants mm-hmm. have always been the thing that like, oh, here's the racist rhetoric, rhetoric right? Like that was right. always the go-to. And it wasn't until I moved to the East Coast and I heard like the term, like, I don't want to keep start using slurs, but there were a lot of slurs I didn't know. Um, right. And my husband did because he had grown up in Pennsylvania and he, he, he knew, right? And so like right. the first time, they, like in that one episode, they talk about Jewish lightning. And I was like, what the hell is Jewish? That's a, why, what is, what is Jewish? Like, is it lightning that strikes in Hanukkah? Like, what is this thing? And yeah. my husband was like, oh no, like it's a slur. And then he explained it to me and I was like, oh, it's kind of like how we use Jerry rig, but now it wasn't always Jerry rig, it was, you know, something else. Mm-hmm. And like, I heard it the one episode, but then I was like, but I'm pretty sure this character is supposed to be Jewish. That right. like the two characters yeah. are talking. And then I was like, well, I don't, I, it's always one of those things like if people are offended by it and they say it's a problem I tend to just think it's a problem right yeah. like and it's not gonna it's not gonna make me not watch the show but I'm gonna listen to those conversations I'm gonna listen to those discussions so I don't make that own mistake in my own storytelling and have it accidentally show up right and and I think that that's, it, yeah I did not pick up on it either watching um watching week to week I also had um, on my personal Twitter following certain people that were pointing it out and I was like mm-hmm. oh I didn't notice that at all um, and I think it was more like the stereotypes they were playing into on the show like yeah. the yeah. penguin was very money hungry and but he well, he's not yeah. Jewish in the comics but they make him Jewish he, and- he is Jewish in some versions apparently okay. I was looking into this because yeah. I was curious if they made him Jewish for this show and I don't think so I didn't find a lot because honestly penguin's not a well-explored character somehow but I do think he is Jewish in some versions. So I don't think this show created okay. that. But they certainly made the choice to have a character with these stereotypical traits be Jewish in this show. That is questionable. Yeah. It is interesting. You said the writers of it are Jewish. I don't know. Yeah, the creators and the writers are, I don't know if it's all of the writers, but many of them mm-hmm. are. Um, and I think in, I was reading an interview with them about this topic and it sounded like they were, um trying to do little things to give more representation uh Mm -hmm. because they're jewish and they want to see that but it sounds like the execution uh really didn't hit well with the jewish (laughs) fan base it's like like, oh shit that back um so i guess at least now like it's addressed and they know about it and hopefully it'll do better in season three and onward Wait, so was yeah. it stuck in season two? Because I like I, I actually forgot all about the bar mitzvah until like you mentioned it. But yeah, that was I can see how that. that I want to say the other big example was that when they showed Harley was Jewish, the the main complaint was oh it took so long to acknowledge the fact that she was Jewish with all this stereotypical stuff going on, and then when it got to the family episode, which I think is the second half of season one um her mother was like very stereotypical jewish mother um i and again i didn't notice this stuff the first time around so i'm probably not the best person to explain it i see and so i'm i missed so i missed that whole thing too and i that's that kind of right. bothers me because i just thought she was like from new jersey like i thought that was the joke right. was like oh look she's from or she's from brooklyn or she's from, wait she's from brooklyn right is that where she goes home to right i think the only rewatching it this time and knowing about the issues the you can only see thing him. that I, I mean yeah but the only way i would know she, her mother was jewish from watching the show itself she says something like a jewish phrase um mm. and but you know just watching casually i would have no idea that harley quinn is jewish so 
Yeah. Maybe that's another so, problem is that they want to. Yeah, I was going to say that sounds like a fail in representation in a different right. direction then. Yeah. So the, and then the other character is Sai, that's the landlord that's Jewish. Oh, yeah. that's right. That was the other where yeah. right. he's very stereotypically. And there's a quote saying that Sai is half man, half Jew. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he there's a lot of stereotypes that come up in the it, that this is really early in season 1 and to me it seems to have fallen off a bit. I, I obviously haven't watched past season 1, but um at the very beginning when he's entered there's a lot of things. There's some lines that are right up on the edge that made me feel weird. I will oh, say the, the but... other big example with Sai is I don't know if you got this far Chris, but mm. there's an episode where they all pass out and Sai Yep. Then, okay, I watched so that one. He goes to get rid of the bodies by throwing mm-hmm. them into an oven. I thought about that too. And I was like, wow, the optics of this are weird. Right. Uh, so it we... seems like just all that adding up had people talking. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I did think about that. That I think that's, and, I think that's the worst thing about that kind of thing, though, is like if it's not something that impacts you directly, sometimes you don't see it. Yeah. Like if I'm watching right. stuff with my husband and I'm like, oh great, the one lady in this movie just got murdered. Um, yeah. like so he sometimes he's like, oh shit, I didn't, yeah, I didn't realize that. And I think it's that's like why it's one of the reasons I do like Twitter, right? Is because then like, you know, yeah. you go through watching something and you miss this and someone's like, Okay, but these things are bad. And you're like, Oh shit, those things are bad. Um Yeah. And I'm glad to hear that they're aware of it and making efforts. Um, I would rather see that, you know, like shows that respond well to criticism and make efforts are a thing I really enjoy. Uh, yeah. as, as someone who really likes BoJack Horseman, they definitely had a lot of criticism of their early seasons and they responded to it and handled it pretty well, I think, um, overall. Yeah, I guess we'll we'll see. Uh, yeah. I, to move on from, <laughs> from this part, uh, so in season two, there's two very important supporting characters introduced. Uh, Chris, you'll have to look forward to Catwoman and Batgirl. Yeah. yeah. Justina, what did you think of those characters and how they were done? <laughs> um, I, I like them both. And I like it because, um, first of all, I like that there are a lot of women leading their lives and just living their lives in this, this show. Um, in a way yes. that I find like super fulfilling. Um, but I also like this idea that like Catwoman is high maintenance and that friend who's kind of like, kind of like bitchy. And you're like, oh, yes. you want her to like me. Like- <laughs> yeah, Chris, Poison like- Ivy has a huge crush on Selena. She's oh, like, I oh, love it. My friend. Um, I also like that they made her, you know, not blonde hair, blue eyed Selena Kyle, which yes. was really, really exciting for me. Um, and then Barbara yeah. was, of course, just a nerd. And I love that, that she's just like the least cool person in Gotham, and which is exactly, which is exactly what you think a cop kid is going to be, right? Like, she's just yeah. like, I'm going to, I'm going to clean up the town. And everyone's like, okay, Barbara. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so Selena's uh, race has been a discussion on this podcast because uh we were under the impression that selena was white uh but we found out fairly recently that selena is actually cuban we had no idea in the comics in the canonically it's just that most of the writers forget uh or intentionally or intentionally forget (laughs) no because there are i mean there are light-skinned cubans right and so right i think her mother was cuban i'm assuming her father was white um, I think that, I think that's what it was, yeah. Okay, but then of so, course in Gotham yeah. High, she's explicitly Latinx, and then in the new Batman movie coming out, she will be uh, black, and she was also black when she was played by Eartha Kitt. Yeah. So it's yeah. it's been a journey for Selena Kyle, uh, <laughs> but here we are. I mean, she also, her... yeah, she, she also got ha- Anne Hathaway, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Right, right. <laughs> she has she has been many things. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was curious watching uh, the Harley Quinn version of her. I was like, okay, obviously she's a woman of color. Is she supposed to be Cuban? Is she is she black? What are we going for? So I did some research. Her voice actress uh, is black, and her mother performed with Eartha Kitt, which was specified on her Wikipedia page. Uh, oh, how so cute. yeah, so I'm wondering if they picked her because of that, or if that played in. But it oh, seemed I like they that. yeah, we're trying to get oh, cool. Yeah, like a little reference to Eartha Kitt's version. So I thought that was cute. How do we feel about the Jim Gordon in this one? <laughs> I 
I love it so much. <laughs> He's so funny. I just watched the one that. where that he becomes best friends with uh, Clayface's hand. Yes. <laughs> I think he he is the most realistic version of Jim Gordon we'll ever see. <laughs> He's right. so unhinged. <laughs> He's like, my wife doesn't love me. And it's like, no, <laughs> you're always up here on the roof waiting for this man in a cape. Like, what are you Oh, I love it. I'm, I'm a big fan of when Harley calls Jim the only healthy adult relationship Batman has. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> I was like, how did you feel about the betrayal of Batman? Because like, I think, I think it's one of my favorite things too. Is like the Batman in this show feels like, like a realer version of Batman than we get to see, right? Yes. Like, <laughs> so messy. <laughs> I take on that. Um, so Batman pops up a couple times in season one, but uh, the Chris, there's a whole episode just about Batman, Bruce Wayne. Um, okay. in the first half of season two and I just watched it like an hour ago um, and I was thinking it's a very similar version of Bruce Wayne that we saw in the Lego Batman movie in terms mm-hmm. of him he's just a giant child he's a man child and Alfred knows that um, and that was oh, really the whole point of the episode I feel like that's even shown up already in season one because there are some scenes in the Batcave with him and Damien. Like there's a scene where he brings him his favorite <laughs> dinner and Damien's like, you didn't make that. Alfred made that. And he's like, I made Alfred make it. <laughs> I, I love Damien. I, he was so cute in this and I wish he popped up more. He is adorable. Ooh. He's the sweet potato pie. Yeah, there's a whole arc oh, in season God. two where it's like, where's Batman? No one can find Batman. And there's this cameo of Damien and he's like, I'm going to be Batman. But it's <laughs> very much established that Damien, you're just a 10 year old child. You can't be Batman. But then he just <laughs> vanishes. And I'm like, where is Damien? Damien would not. Go? Yeah. Where'd he go? We get Batgirl entering. I'm like, Damien would be pestering the shit out of her. <laughs> yes. Um, but to answer your question, Justina, uh, I agree. I think this is one of the more realistic versions of Bruce Wayne. It just fits that archetype of who he is. Yeah, I mean, like, you have to think, like, if we ever think about superheroes as, like, they are there to enforce the status quo, right? Right, (laughs) yeah. Like, so it makes sense. He's like, I'm a multi-billionaire, lives in Gotham. I'd like the crime rate to be pretty low. Like, so he's obviously (laughs) got some stake, some skin in this game, so to speak. And so I like that yeah. the show makes it seem like that. Like he's really just, he's like, he's, he's yeah, I sure he's helping Gotham, but he's also really helping himself in a lot yeah. of ways. So. Yes, yes. Yeah. They very explicitly have moments of him being like, I'm bad with emotions, you know? Like, yeah. Which I love. So did you guys have a favorite episode so far and uh, a favorite character? Like we, I know we talked about favorite voices on the show, but does that affect your favorite character as well? Hmm man I definitely I don't know if I have a favorite episode I definitely think I like season two better than season one um I think we get I think we get less of Harley's like daily bullshit and more of like the the secondary characters coming to the forefront um I (laughs) I really really like um I I mean I I don't want to spoil it for you Chris because it's such a delight to like see it unfold but I really like how uh, how Doctor is it Doctor Doctor Psycho, right? The little yes, little yeah. short dude. Um, how he like truly is terrible, and the yeah. rest of them are all just kind of horrified. And then they keep bringing up this fact that he used the c word, and it's, yeah. like, it's like we should have known you were terrible because you used the c word, <laughs> right? Yes. And even the the evil what are they called lex luther the legion oh. of, of doom yes doom, even yeah. they're like no so that was really bad the That's press conference bad. they hold where they're like we do not want to be associated with mr <laughs> psycho my right. favorite thing. Um, i also am a big fan of how they use um like reality tv at talk shows in this show uh yeah. and one of my favorite ones they have is uh, when he originally says the c word the headline on the show is man says terrible thing again we'll probably get second chance yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh my god yeah. um I, i'm talking about the league of doom is that the, the right the legion legion and of legion. doom you'd think i'd know by now um <laughs> 
I didn't notice this my first time watching, but Lex Luthor is a person of color in this version. Yeah. And I thought that was like, that was interesting as well because it's like, <laughs> I'm sorry, my, my brain just skips the part. There's a scene literally in this the show you're going to get to, Chris, where uh-huh. like Wonder Woman has a lasso around like these, these monkeys or alien, they, they're flying creatures, they're not monkeys, they're flying creatures they're aliens okay. and it says something and she looks at superman he's like what so all aliens know each other's language or whatever <laughs> like, like, yeah i know what he said actually but that's not the point <laughs> so, all i just think of was like like the, the like how that changes the superman lex luther dynamic when lex luther is a person of color right like it's like i think yeah. it's like it makes it so much interesting much more interesting because yeah. like, like I'll, be, I'll be real superman is like probably my least favorite superhero um and that's saying a lot because like captain america comic book captain america not movie captain america but right. comic not, book captain not america, chris pretty, evans not chris evans <laughs> chris evans is fucking delightful um but comic book <laughs> captain america is pretty goddamn boring and he's the worst <laughs> he's absolutely the worst and so like the superman in this like the superman in the show is like so dumb right like they make him kind of like he's like <laughs> he's like kind of dumb and he's like I'm gonna smash a big rock and like they have Lex Luthor who's just like yeah so I'm like he's like smooth and like smart and so like I it almost makes me want to see more of that relationship and that's the only time you'll ever hear me say that because I don't care (laughs) otherwise (laughs) no I I agree completely like Superman is my least the person I'm least interested in but that does make that relationship more dynamic uh and more interesting. I I think there are many comic writers themselves that agree on this point as the most recent rebirth literally brought in an alternate reality version of Superman that's more interesting than regular Superman to be the main <laughs> Superman. There was also <laughs> my favorite. <laughs> there was a Chinese Superman at one point, right? Yeah, right, he is uh, he is Yanks. Yep, he's still running about. He's here. He's just he has a he had a comic that was ongoing for a little while. I don't think it's still ongoing because DC likes to cut everything. So I can't pick a favorite episode either because I just loved it all so much. But my least favorite is the one where we get to see King Shark's engagement. And I don't know why I just didn't care. Hmm. I think, I for- think it's because it's the most grown up episode. So Chris, oh. you haven't gotten to it yet because it's in season, it's towards the end okay. of season two. It's when they have the, and the reason also, it's, it's the same time we get the cool episode where uh, Harley and Ivy keep accidentally having sex. <laughs> it's Is that the, the same one? Party. It's the same party episode oh. of the Bachelorette Party. It's the Bachelor okay. Party and the Bachelorette Party and they're on a boat and that's when uh, King Shark's like, parents come and say, you. And I think the reason you don't like it because I can tell you why I don't think I think it's not satisfying it's because the whole point of him, of him like being on land is he's like I'm not gonna get married I'm running away from my responsibility and then at the end he's like yeah I got married like, <laughs> so, like it's kind of a MacGuffin it's kind of the MacGuffin right. of the episode because you think he's gonna like push back against getting married and then like literally he gets married and like at a later at the wedding like his wife is there at the wedding with him with a poison, a poison I was supposed to like, marry kite man spoiler for you again Chris. Huh. Uh, that's okay <laughs> yeah i mean maybe, maybe my answer will change when i finish my rewatch but i just yeah. remember watching that one and being like god i don't care <laughs> well yeah. i'll tell you then, my favorite episode so far so i've okay. seen all the way through season one uh is the one where they go inside harley's brain that episode oh, is yeah, the bomb yes i love the payoff where you find out she jumped he didn't yeah. push her I did that was really powerful. Oh, that was really good. Yeah, that's a great one. And then favorite characters? Oh, man. Um, I'm guessing besides Harley, is that, are we including Harley in that? No, I think she counts. Um, I'll go first. My favorite character, I, mean, I love all of them, but I loved Poison Ivy in this. I just loved mm-hmm. her deadpan humor. She's just so cool. And she has the coolest powers, but, and also her outfit is just so cool. Her, her pants yes. with the vines on them love it i think mine <laughs> man i think i think mine is also going to be poison ivy but with a like a with a very close tie with with king shark just because yeah. like he comes in and he's just like i'm here to program your <laughs> <laughs> it's just 
I do. I love that so much. And, he's like, and he he's only like got him up to 18 followers. That was his social yeah. media maven skills. <laughs> yes. It was just so funny. And it's like literally his whole thing. He's just like, thank you for like, there were point three times to Harley. He's like, thank you for, you know, looking at my skill set and appreciating me <laughs> as a full person. It's not just the murderous beast. And he's like, rah, and bite people in half. Yeah. So I think it's like, because he's such a soft, I think that's why I love him. Because he's such a soft boy. BOI. So yeah. And like <laughs> then like he's biting people in half. So it's just so delightful like, that that when they look at his most traumatic memory from when he's a kid and that's when he accidentally ate his younger brother. Like it's just like <laughs> <laughs> King like, why Shark. Did you bring that up? <laughs> like, he's gonna Love be it. in the next Suicide Squad movie, and I'm curious to see how they're gonna make him in that <laughs> because this is King Shark, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is, that's fascinating. Is that is fascinating. I have no idea how they're going to do it, but probably poorly. I'm just going to throw that out there. Yeah, it's going to be my awful. call now. <laughs> it is James Gunn, so we'll see. Hmm. Uh, in case you're curious, uh, I like Poison Ivy the best as well. So. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, like, who was your favorite? Oh, so we it was Poison Ivy. Ivy. I mean, I also love Harley. I've always loved Harley. Um. I was raised on that animated series where she was first introduced, so I've always yeah. loved her. But that's one of my um, favorite episodes right there. Is that the, the episode where her and yeah. Poison Ivy like team up and they're like, "No man can yes. stop us." Yeah, apparently Poison Ivy's voice actress played the really snooty cat in Secret Life of Pets, and that's just <laughs> like, <laughs> so <laughs> on brand. That's really funny. <laughs> I love that the, you know, talking about Ivy brings up for me one of the things I wanted to talk about, which is that the concept of evil in this show is very entertaining to me. So Ivy does not see herself as a villain and constantly corrects people for it, which I love. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's this episode where, um, where, oh, what is the character that was a book? What is her name? Oh, oh queen. queen of fables yeah queen of fables so there's a whole conversation about how queen of uh queen of fables is evil evil because harley is like broadcast evil but queen of fables yeah. is cable evil oh yeah. that whole episode <laughs> about the glass ceiling for the super villains yes i love yes that. yes it was really but, good wait, have you seen this have you seen the next arc with queen of fables when she is now released that's what i'm where i'm at i have watched okay that yeah so have you did you watch the one where you have to take out the whole family line no, I haven't watched that one yet, but it is oh. okay to spoil. Go for it. Oh my God, that's probably my favorite episode. It's literally, they go to do a job and she there's a family reunion like right next to her and they're doing the job and she like wipes out all everybody and Harley's like, you can't kill everyone and she's like, you gotta take out the family line. <laughs> oh, wait, I did. Line. I did yes. watch that one. I forgot I mean, that like, line. Yes. <laughs> she's like an electrical dude because actually like, I told you to take out the family line. And I think that was like was the moment I was like, I really love it. This That's like the one, one she, of my favorites. She calls up the three little pigs and they just start <laughs> eating people. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, Harley's oh literally- God she's leaving the yeah. heist and she's like we did it and nobody got hurt and she turns the corner and sees the absolute <laughs> the <blood. laughs> yeah. oh my god yeah that, that was pretty funny and clayface takes out his eyes and tosses them and he just goes i won't need these anymore <laughs> <laughs> and i think it's like i like tt i think it's like a good idea to do a rewatch there's so much there's so the writing is like and i think it's like the the, the thing like even with like the anti-semitism is that I did not notice but at most the most of the time the writing is so good that like you're listening to things you're like wait what and you have to rewind it to like yeah. catch the full like depth of the joke yeah. um because there are there's so much there's so and much it, that people are doing the jokes are so funny that they don't get old like I've yeah. rewatched the first half of season one like five times now and it's still good it's still funny there's also just, I know we've, I've mentioned it with the like jokes on the mugs and everything. There's a lot of visual humor too, that like, I was paying way closer attention watching it because I knew we were going to talk about it today. And there's like headlines and there's t-shirts. There's all kinds yes. of jokes going on in the background, along with the jokes that are being said. You haven't gotten to the episode yet where, um, where basically um, Batman's taking out a commission. So like, like the Legion of Doom takes over Gotham or whatever. Um, amazing because it's like the beginning that's the first part of season two but there's an episode where bane has a prison and he's running a prison and it's just a hole in the ground and <laughs> <laughs> there's like he's like they're going to therapy and like 
like I oh and Harley get there and like someone's like I needed you a hat and she's like why he's like it gets cold here at night so whatever and it's just <laughs> like it's so much happening in like this episode I was just like I have to go back and rewatch this because it's so funny and it's just like it's just like it's like really like there's some sight gags but a lot of it's just like you know when I was killing and eating people I didn't really think about their feelings and stuff like that you know? <laughs> it's just really funny it's so good i love that so much Um, so what would you guys want to see in season three do you have any wishes well no anti-semitism that'd be cool (laughs) yeah let's not do that that again yeah that's a good starting place (laughs) yeah um i so i think is i what i don't want them to do is i don't want them to do the we have to find a way to break up harley and ivy to make tension yeah, what I'd like to see, in, yeah, what I'd like to see instead is like maybe the world gets bigger. Um, because I really enjoyed that episode where they went to um Themyscira for the for the, the the yeah, there was an episode where they go to Themyscira for like a bachelorette party. It's like I thought that was like <laughs> it's really funny when you take those characters outside of like Gotham. Um, so I'd love to see them go yeah. to like uh Metropolis or um what's the other one? I can't think of the other one. There's like was it uh something city what's like uh oh where green arrow lives uh central oh, star city star, star city. city star city yeah central city is or, where flash lives yeah central city. so even there like i'd love to see them like go on a road trip and like just so- like yes. wreak havoc road trip episode oh i would yeah. love that see harley and ivy like figuring out their relationship now that it's changed and like I know we kind of got some of that in season two but now they're actually together so I want I want them being together figuring it out I don't want them to break up either that would be so ridiculous I'm gonna I'm gonna be extremely on brand um and say that I would like to see the other Robins show up now that we've got Damien like we know Damien (laughs) exists so I want to see Nightwing I want to see Red Hood I want to see, see Red Robin. Red Robin. I want like a, <laughs> a Batman family reunion episode. <gasps> that would be hilarious. <laughs> oh my God. That's Imagine the, the absolute disaster that a family reunion with all of his children would be. And the show would do make, make it so fun. Um, yeah, hopefully this sense. family reunion wouldn't get eaten though. <laughs> <laughs> or I could even see, I could even see Harley as at this point, as far as I've seen her, she's fixed the relationship between Batman and Jim. I could see her just meddling in the Bat family and being like, you all need to talk to each other. Like going full therapist on them. It'd be amazing. Oh yeah. That'd be amazing. Yes. <laughs> uh, and then I feel like they have to do something with like Gotham City Sirens with Selena and Ivy and Harley. I would love to see them do an arc where they're just like, she's in their duo, make it a trio. Um, and something with the Suicide Squad, I feel like they have to do something. Um, they have that great site, that site gap, right? They're like, oh, right, it's the t-shirts. Yeah, the t-shirts. Yeah, the t-shirts. They ask me to join their group. I, I don't know. About about that. It's yeah. so good. Like, I want something. With, I just uh, played a, a Batman video game where they did some Suicide Squad stuff. Um, so in my mind, I'm like, yes, I want some of that just because it's such. Uh, such a connection to Harley Quinn's character at this point I want to see this show's take on that and like make Amanda Waller the main villain of season three or season four if you know we get a season four um but I would like to see that oh I just I think I would just like to like add I love how smart this show is with its commentary I mean a lot of times it's in throwaway gags but one of my favorite ones is when in the episode where they're talking about Queen Fable and they say that she destroyed Gotham City Harley just goes I would actually say a lack of affordable housing destroyed Gotham City but okay (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah. or when King Shark goes to prison and he discusses the problems with the prison industrial complex and he's like I've learned a lot being here um, yeah, I just think the show it's very it, it's very smart they're it, they're said in you know they're they're jokes and they're often throwaway lines but they're very clever and insightful and I like that a lot I like that it's such a mundane show like there's still yeah. superhero stuff going on but we get all the melodrama stuff that I love and just like seeing them get coffee in the morning like that's what I'm here for yeah, I, a lot of the episodes, at least in season one, uh, begin with the heist already over. So they'll be walking in from the heist, explaining to Ivy what <laughs> happened. And then it's like, what happens after the heist? And I love it so much. 
Yeah. I, I also love the commentary, but I also love that, like, we really see Harley Quinn just get the shit beat out of her so many times. <laughs> like, yes. She's just not, like, you know, like, she's not hyper capable. Like, it's one of my, my biggest complaints with, like, Harley Quinn in the movies is, like, she's a little too capable. Like, I want to see, like, she's a brawler. And I love that in this cartoon, like, you get to see her brawling, right? Like, she's just like, I'm going to get knocked down. I'm going to get back up. And it's going to be a bad idea, but I'm going to do it anyway. And I, yes. I do think that's more along the lines of, like, who you expect Harley Quinn to be. Like, she's a gymnast. And she was a psychiatrist. She wasn't, like, like a pit fighter or anything like that, right? And so she's right, just kind right, of, yeah. like... She's all like nervous energy and that's what gets her through. And so I, I really like that they, like, I, like, I like that they, they just keep emphasizing how messy she is, right? And it's like, they don't yeah, try absolutely. to make her like, a less messy character. They're like, no, she's a mess. <laughs> she's like, yeah. my ex-boyfriend <laughs> threw me in a vat of chemicals. And it's like, oh, well, I jumped in a vat of chemicals, but it was his fault for it mostly, right? Like, so, and so I just think it's like, it's such a great, it's such a great commentary. Great. Like, it's a great way to take things that were, toxic and problematic in the comics and and spin them and twist them and make them more more realistic and, and a little bit more self-aware absolutely i agree i think there's a there's a line that ivy says at one point when she's watching dr psycho reunite with his son which is a wild moment and she goes <laughs> this is a fucked up but weirdly moving and that would be my summary <laughs> of the show overall <laughs> Yeah, Psycho's attraction to giant women comes back a, a few times. Oh, no. <laughs> oh yeah. Right. yeah. I, Ivy gets very big at one point and he goes, put me in her pocket. I, and he has like cash out. He goes, what? I got a type. Type, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> so good. All right, so Justina, we ask everyone the same question that comes on our show. If you had the chance to tell a Batman story to your liking, it could be anything what would it be? Oh. And it could be that would, family. It could be anyone in relation. Yeah. To it would be, oh, so this is hard. It would be, I'm going to cheat. So it would be Huntress, but it would be Selena Kyle, Bruce Wayne's daughter, Huntress. Love and it. And that way I get to tell the story of Selena Kyle as well. Because I'm really, I feel like they did Halle Berry wrong in that Catwoman movie. <laughs> yeah that's really true well, well, I haven't really forgiven them for that one um and so yeah so I think that's what I would like is just to see I'd love to see like yeah that's what I would like to see very well, I complicated I yeah. just I would read anything you write I would read <laughs> this is I true always, like, I always like Huntress and I always think she gets short shrift because she's just basically like girl Batman but then they just make her like I love to remember the prey because she's kind of like I have no personality I spent my rest of my life just so awkward doing her lines into the mirror oh my gosh I love that so much <laughs> Justina where can we find you on social media and do you have any projects coming up or just released that our listeners should look out for oh uh, sure yeah so um you can find me at Justina Ireland on Twitter and you can find me at my website justinaireland.com um, I, no, I don't Instagram or TikTok or any of the other things because one is enough. And <laughs> I have a Star Wars book coming up in January. That's a middle grade book called A Test of Courage. And it's one of the first books in the series, the new series, The High Republic. So it's a whole new continuity. Well, it's the same continuity, but it's pr previous to, prior to Phantom Menace and, and those sorts of things, the prequel era. Um, and then also the sequel to Dread Nation, Death of Divide, is out right now. So you can pick that up. And it, or if you're looking for a paperback, you can pick it up in April. Yay. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you so you. much for having me. This was fun. Of course. Yeah. If, if you ever want to talk about season three, or maybe I'll we'll be see back. Again. We'll be back. We'll have to, <laughs> yes. Chris will be caught up. And, uh, yes, I will be. I'm not going to stop now that I've started. I love it. <laughs> 